and in business, African finance ministers who form the bulk of the Board of Governors of the African Development Bank have, asked by, have been asked by the United States government, which is seeking a rejection of the report of the Ethics Committee that investigated and cleared the institution's head, Akiwumi Adeshino. Treasury Secretary Steve Muchin, in the two-page letter dated May 22nd, asked the continent's biggest multilateral lender to set aside its ethics committee report, exonerating additional from accusations by an anonymous group within the AFDB claiming favoritism in Nigerian appointment and waste of the bank's resources. I am now joined by Michelle Agasti, legal practitioner. Good afternoon, Michelle. Good afternoon, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us on the news. Now thank the United certainly. Now the United States AFDB's biggest non-African stakeholder has expressed deep reservations about the integrity of the committee's process concerning the president of the multilateral bank Akiomi Additional. What is your perspective to this? Well, I think the first step is to look at uh, the structure of the Africa Development Bank. Um, as you know, the AFDB has both African shareholders and non-African shareholders. And um, behind Nigeria, who holds about, I think, 9% of the shareholding of the AFDB is the United States of America, which holds about 6%. Now, it is the case, therefore, that um, as with any organization, a shareholder is always placed to express concerns, express disagreements, and or express any issues that they may have. So it is the case that, um, you know, based on the whistleblower report against the Kremlin additional, uh, that the USA, in my view, as a shareholder, has expressed some concern about the process behind the investigation of these allegations. So it is for the AFDB, I think, to take a step further and um, assuage the concerns of one of their shareholders by putting in place the um, further investigations, which I understand the U.S. has asked for an independent audit, i.e. outside of the structure and the internal processes of the AFDB, to look into this and, in fact, clear out and say that of a truth that um, there is no foul play involved. All right. Now, we also saw the Under Secretary of the Treasury for the International Affairs for the United States having criticized Adesina for approving loans too quickly and worsening Africa's debt situation. Should this be a cause for concern? Yes. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, the said Under Secretary was um, speaking in his role as a World Bank executive um, after he had left the administration of the United States. So I think first and foremost, it's important to look at it from perspective that this is from one development financial institution, the World Bank, to another development financial institution, the AFDB. Now, um, as to the criticism for approving loans too quickly and worsening the debt situation, um, these have been statements and policies and schools of thought that have actually been available for such a long time. Now, for them to then say that it is a situation that it's a DFI, such as AFDB, that is worsening the debt profile, uh, I wouldn't be too quick to agree with that analysis, especially because AFDB-style lending is usually specifically to the development of the third country, um, that oftentimes um, thereafter pay its own way subsequently. And on the international market, when you compare it with loans that you tend to receive from commercial banks and or other developed countries, the interest rate is much lower. Mm -hmm. And um, the proportion of the loans that we receive from the AFDB as well as from other DFIs is minuscule in comparison to the bucket of loans and lending that um, many African countries already have. So if it was a criticism as to the entire, you know, standpoint of the international lending community to the Africa debt situation, it would be a different ball game. But I think to target the DFIs such as uh,
is not in the best interest of um, African states, in my view, anyway. Now, let's talk about Africa getting validation from the international community, which is something we hear very frequently. Would claims of this nature affirm concerns of some Africans who sometimes refer to cases like this as an interference? Okay, well, in my view, there are two ways to look at this. Um, there are situations where your internal processes should be um, completely independent of the international community. So if this was a situation where Akin Umi Adishino was functioning in his capacity as, say, Minister for Agriculture for Nigeria, which he previously held, and there were criticisms as to an internal process that had cleared him of any wrongdoing in respect of an allegation, in respect of what he had done in pursuance of a ministerial function in Nigeria, I would say, of course, that um, this is a cause for concern and the type of interference that we do not need. Mm. However, the AFDB is an organization that is made up of a number of shareholders, including Nigeria, I'm sorry, including Africans, as well as members of the international community. Now, these shareholders have a critical role to play because they are also funders of the AFDB. So it is a situation, in my view, where you put your money where the mouth is, or in reverse, put your mouth where your money is. If my money is in an organization and my funding is um, geared toward the policies and the organizational structure of an organization, then of course I have the right to speak out. So I think with the AFDB situation, it's just a peculiar situation where the shareholding interest includes the United States of America, and um, we cannot therefore receive cash and thereafter say that um, you should keep quiet. All right, finally, before I let you go, how would this possibly impact on investments coming into the AFDB at this point and moving forward? Well, to my mind, I, I, I shouldn't see this as um, really difficult in terms of earning um, you know, funding for the AFDB. And the reason is very simple. Um, this has not been an indictment on mm -hmm. Akin Wome Additional yet. It's just a call for a more independent process to look into certain whistleblower allegations. Whistleblower allegations are common. They're a dime a dozen, and you see them in a number of organizations. So I think this is the case, therefore, that um, it's really just the situation for the AFDB that they should get this out of the way very quickly, um, not allow this to be a long drawn out process. And once they're able to do that, then I don't think this would um, rise up to the level of being a pothole in the um, asphalt of the AFDB's policy objectives. Michelle Lagatse, legal practitioner, thank you so much for joining us on the news. Many thanks for having me. Certainly.